Many years ago, a group of anime fans got together to organize conventions and make their own fan merchandise. The group grew, adding animators to their number, and produced several fan anime films. Those were so popular, they got the budget to make an animated feature film, Royal Space Force, The Wings of Honey Amise. While not a commercial success, it brought a lot of critical praise for the thoroughness of its world building and its artistic sense. Uh, their next project synthesized those two experiments into a six episode OVA, Aim for the Top Gunbuster. And that's what I'll be talking about in this review here. If you watch the first episode of Gunbuster, you'll be forgiven for thinking it's just a parody. On the surface, it has all the trappings of a classic girls sports anime. Fit high school girls, melodrama about who's getting team teamed up with whom, an airheaded protagonist bullied by a clique, or click, however you pronounce that, and a bouncing, upbeat opening theme about making yourself better. Except this is made by anime fans, so they're all training to pilot giant robots. Now that first episode is a pitch perfect parody. So much that you're not always exactly sure what's a joke. It feels exactly like a sports anime, but the visuals of Mecha doing push-ups really ramp up the comedic effect. It's a little weird. Then we get to episode two. The parody disappears, most of the humor fades away, and Gunbuster blossoms into a science fiction drama. The alien menace that's referenced briefly in the opening minutes of the first episode suddenly comes front and center as the characters deal with the trauma of fighting in a war, they lose some comrades, and they start to face their own imminent mortality. Yeah. The animation quality, meanwhile, varies. While the characters remain mostly on model, and there are plenty of quiet moments without any movement, as is very typical of anime-style animation. Most of the action sequences, sequences feature plenty of smoothly animated movement. It's exactly what you'd expect of skilled fans executing on their favorite ideas. They love this stuff. They pour attention into many things, but know when to back off. The Direction 2 is not afraid of unusual camera angles, but remains remarkably lucid all the way throughout. If anything, though, that gets to one of Gunbuster's biggest drawbacks. While Honey Amise felt like Gainax's one big shot at a memorable work of art, Gunbuster feels like all their favorite things from anime all mixed into one show. Cute schoolgirls, mecha, space combat, Grizzled space captains, weird aliens, massive megastructures, and random fan service. More on that in a second. While the staff does skillfully blend those elements into a very comprehensible plot, the series does feel schizophrenic at times because there's just so much in there. Now let me talk about that fan service for a moment. The first episode uh, introduces the famous or infamous Gynax Bounce in which the artists lovingly animate the bouncing of a girl's breasts as she moves. However, other than a brief locker room scene of girls in their underwear, there's no further fan service until episode 2, which features a lengthy bathhouse scene with three girls whom we see from practically every angle. The rest of the series kind of follows suit in both ways, Long stretches with no significant fan service, then suddenly large swaths of nudity or scantily clad girls. It can be a bit jarring. Overall, for a staff with only one full-length feature film under their belt, they do a remarkably successful job at pacing, both in terms of editing shots and sequences and the overall story. They hold on shots where necessary so the viewer can process new information, while the action sequences can move at a breakneck speed. Impressive, although still a little rough around the edges. Even better, the characters in the show do grow over time. 
The protagonist in particular grows as a person, but slowly. She earns her character growth without feeling whiny or annoying during the episodes that lead up to that. I was very impressed with how well they managed that, and she's not the only one. Speaking of the characters, props to the voice actors, who, even in a short OVA like this, deliver strong emotional performances. Now, some of the minor characters are rather blandly performed, um, particularly you know, uh, random bridge characters, but most of the primary, char primary cast sound spot on for their emotional deliveries. Um, as the show progresses, it leans more heavily on its mecha roots. And here's where it gets hard to recommend, or even, in a sense, appreciate Gunbuster. Without getting into spoilers, what starts as a sports parody and turns into a Gundam-style serious mecha war story grows decidedly super robot in the final episodes. We're back to that weakness of a show made by fans by combining all their loves into one story. The titular giant robot feels like it was pulled straight out of a cheesy 70s giant robot show, complete with shouted attack phrases and martial arts moves. It never feels wrong, but it does contribute to a slightly unmoored feeling, where you can't quite pigeonhole the series and figure out what it's trying to do. And sometimes that's a virtue, but in this sense, it just it, it feels odd. For example, time dilation resulting from near faster than light travel is a major plot point, and the final episode is almost entirely in black and white. A lot of different things happening in this OVA. Weird. Ultimately, though, Gunbuster is a love letter to anime, but at a much more fundamental level than your typical fan creation. Gunbuster isn't just copying anime tropes. Its fans love anime for what it tries to do, for its deeper themes and emotional weight and attractive, cool characters that the viewers grow to admire. These people are not just copying anime, they are trying to make a great work of anime. And for that, they should certainly be uh, commended. Ultimately, Gunbuster partly works based on how familiar you are with anime tropes, how much you can laugh along with some of these elements, but also how much you can appreciate fans shooting for the moon. That is ultimately what Gunbuster is, and it's an impressive achievement on that alone. 